So Facebook, yes, it says live. Actually, Facebook Live has got a new feature so on how to go live. So it's going to be a little new for me. Um, I'm going to zoom out. Why did you go so big? Okay. Well, hello all. Uh, as you can see, I'm not a professional uh, when it comes to Facebook video. Uh, for those that don't know me um, or have seen me, I, I've met some of you personally, but a lot of you I've never met. Uh, my name is Mark McGrin. I am an RC guy through and through. First car was an RC10T, uh, had the gold chassis, all that. I actually still have my RC10T from back in the day. And as a kid, for those that are younger folks, we had these things called magazines, right? Right, and RC car action was my deal, and, and I would cut out the, the cars that I liked. Um, and because one of the things that always drew attraction to me was how these cool paint jobs on these toy cars. Well, I got uh, into it later in life, uh, back in 2005, and man, I didn't want to pay someone like me <laughs> to have a cool body, right? So I got a cheapy setup, I think it was a passion. I mean, I probably was 100 bucks in total. It started painting. And did that in 05, painted more, painted more, painted more, and, and raced for pretty consistently from 05 to, to about 2010 until my daughter was born during that time. Uh, my 15 minutes of claim to fame to RC Paint is I did paint uh, the protoform body for the LTCR. At the time I got back into RC three years ago, it was still the body of choice, and I had no idea. I remember I looked it up, and that was the body that a lot of folks were using that's since changed. All that. That's my background. Painted a lot. Started painting back again, and um, and and yes, uh, hello, Mr. Matt Kid. I, I uh, don't have enough white claw <laughs> in my room. Actually, that's you, my friend, white claw. Um, and I am a hotel painter. Typically, what I do is I want to kind of go through my process. I saw someone post up going talking about cutting. Some people are talking about masking, designing. I did this about a year ago or so, actually a little over a year ago, and I had a lot of comments and whatnot. Uh, so I thought I'd do it again. So I don't know how long it's going to take. Feel free to ask any and all questions. I can see those uh, from there. Uh, today I'm going to be showing you a buggy body that I'm working on, and actually two right here. Okay. Um, I actually erased, I did some of the work on it uh, earlier today. Uh, but I'm gonna erase some of that. So um, talk about kind of the first things first. Okay, I actually got a text on uh, Man Mark. Actually, it was a Facebook message from Man Mark sent me a picture. My, my stuff's looking all wonky. It's not sticking to the body, what's going on? Um, a lot of these bodies, when you get them, right, you gotta wash them real good. One thing, hold on, um, that I use, right, is this guy. Man, this is your friend if you want to wash the body along with just some detergent. So just so you guys know, I don't carry this with me when I travel. This was part of the hotel. I get like these little sweets because I do travel a lot. All right. Um, so what I like to do, depending on the body, uh, hello, Mr. Doyle, is I get as hot water as I can. And then I put hot water on it. I put the dish soap in it. Right. The, again, you're not going to use a ton, but more the merrier. At that point. What I like to do is use this guy, this, this side, or even paper towels, and I just wash it really good. One place you have to pay attention to, right, where a lot of the residue on these bodies come will be, right, in these little, these any type of uh, gaps, right, folds into the uh, bodies. Touring car bodies up on the edges and in, in the, in the roofs, because what's gonna happen is they try to get these, these bodies as clean as possible, but a lot of time that's where the residue is left, so I spend a lot of my time uh, definitely cleaning on those insides. Okay, at that point, I use a um, just a, a normal towel. I don't use a uh, just a dish. I actually use a dish towel. I uh, don't use a cotton one that's going to leave uh, some fuzz on it. Um, anything that's not like a normal cotton. A lot of times, these are the the blends and right that are that dry off super fast. Whatever. Um, so again, dry those suckers off. Get them good. Boom. Right. One thing, since I do work a lot and I'm actually a, a uh, human being that works and <laughs> has family and kids, is I don't do, knock all my stuff out all at one time. For example, 
So last night, got to the hotel room, decided to clean it all up, right? And I cleaned, right, uh, this body, and I ended up masking it. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put this on Do Not Disturb. Um, all right, cool. So, uh, pool, got my bodies. Let's talk about that. Wash my bodies, dry my bodies, masking. Now, I used to always, always, always brush, and believe it or not, I've had this brush probably since 2007 or 2008. Now there's no more bristles. There's nothing fancy about it. Um, it's just a one and a half inch, uh, 38 millimeter brush. That's it, right? A little art brush, nothing big. I think you should have got it in the, um, the art section of Hobby Lobby probably. Um, I love it because it actually, I've used it so much. There's no, the bristles fall off. That's all I do. Now, I'm currently using Bob Diamond. Right, Bob Diddley, Dively, whatever the case is, they've been around forever and ever and ever. Um, so a lot of folks might say, hey, do you use Biddy? Do you use Bob Dively? Uh, a lot of guys are now trying the, the Splat Lat or something like that. It's not RC specific. Now, with that said, they all cost about the same. The reason I got Bob Dively, and so Stefano, if you ever decided to watch this, the only reason I got this is I bought a gallon online, and the gallon was... I want to say like a hundred bucks, all right, shipped, okay, which comes out to a gallon is four of these. Well, four of these, right, come out to $120 plus tax, okay? So you're going to be spending about 130 bucks, 140 bucks on four of these versus a gallon up for hundred bucks. Y'all that know that paint, right, we, have, we, we get paid peanuts, right? <laughs> you know, what we make on these bodies, so every little bit helps to make as much money as possible. Now, if you're doing it on your own and it's it's here and there and you're not using a lot, and just get a 32 ounce. Uh, I actually like the Biddy, and let me tell you why. The Bob Dively, right, is notorious, notorious for gunking up, okay? And so, again, I brushed it on, and last night I brushed it on. But if you're going to spray, right, this, what I literally do, and hopefully my wife doesn't do this, I get my, I use my $15 Harbor Freight, um, airbrush use my my tank but i put the can in there and i use the strainer that i use the spaghetti in he doesn't know i do that okay and i pour that in like this every little bit and i knock it down right and i get all the big clumps out at that point if you do spray i literally have that cup my little my cup for my airbrush I put a little water in it stir it up real good and i thin it out ever so slightly literally how much do you do Depends on how much you get in there, but I literally, I'll turn off the water and turn it right back off, right? At that point, I spray it. Okay, with spraying, you really need about, depending on your pressure, right? I like to crank it up to about 50 to 60, uh, sometimes more depending on that, but about 50 or 60. Uh, I'll need about two coats, right? Two good solid coats. You're going through, well, how much? Well, you don't want a dusting, but again, you're gonna, it's gonna be translucent on the body. When it comes to painting or that on brushing it on I did I do five now one thing I used to do and this is really important if you're gonna brush it okay and I learned this from I guess the guy that I have uh, always try to emulate back in the day and still try to do is mr. Rowley or painting Rowley as he was known on RC tech back in the day um, uh, and so he actually I watched his some of his videos uh, on Instagram and made a lot of sense what he did was he did super super thin uh coats on there right and actually what i'll do is i won't do it i'll kind of show you what i'm going to do but uh, just a dab up i'll show you do what i'll put one more coat on this guy and i'll show you how much that i do again nothing fancy about this um if you have questions feel free to dump in there but let's see if i can there you go okay so you guys can see how much i'm gonna put in there right so put a dab, okay, and boom. I would probably put a touch more in there. Now, the reason I've done that and learned is too thick of mask, okay, is difficult to peel out for uh, pinstripes. The reason being it's gonna stick a little bit more, um, it's just more difficult to maneuver around. You don't need thick, thick, thick paint or uh, mask just enough to be there so what i'll do is is again got this guy here actually this is my bed i want to sit there and i'm going to brush 
right? And I'm gonna to try to thin it out as much as possible. Now, I think I got too much. So what I'm gonna do now is take that brush, right? Actually, I don't have too much. Let's say I got too much in there. What I do at that point, put this guy down, glob this guy up and put it back and just scrape it back in the bottle. That's it. You got too much. Now, since I am putting another extra coat on there that I didn't plan on to, it's gonna, it's gonna be light. But what I wanna show you, what is a pain in the butt and I'll show you here in a second, and you guys know what I'm talking about, is, all right, hold on, these big globs, right, oh, my bad, in the spaces, right, so you've got the super thick and the crevices that come around, uh, they're going to pile up and pool up right there. One thing you want to make sure is you never want to have those globs, it's a pain in the butt to cut through them, right? And you know what I'm talking about. It's got that big old thick, it takes longer to dry, but the bigger issue than just the drying aspect of it is going to be the cutting, okay? Again, creates that super, super thick um, mask, which makes it difficult when you're cutting it and you're actually peeling it, what's gonna happen is it's not as smooth as possible. So what I do, it's on there really good right now, okay? But I'm gonna show you there's still spot so what i do with my brush literally is dab it okay to get that out of those spots okay now if you got a 12 scale or something with a big old fin or something that's going to dive in there man be very careful with that okay and then i spread it out and that did it pretty good and then i just dab it some more spread it out again super thin i would have been a little thicker with an actual if i didn't have these coats on there but again, you can, I'm literally, this is how much time I would take on one pass because I don't want those big clumps. It's clearly all over there, but again, I'm making sure I'm not going to get those big clumps in there. Cool. Right now, I typically would actually keep this out. I wouldn't wash it out at the moment. Okay. Because if I was doing a whole bunch of stuff now, what I did last night and what you can do two things. Okay. You can get a fan just like a normal box fan, a little bitty fan, right? Put it up there. You don't need heat to help dry this, right? Because again, I want to be efficient. But so what I did was I sit there and I set up, sorry about that, my good buddy. I don't get to use this that often, but <laughs> you can see, don't need it for the hair, right? Set this up, laid it on its side in my hotel room, prop these guys up, man, and help dry them. So last night I was able to put about five coats, five done coats on it, and we're good to go. All right. So Sorry about that if that was loud. Now I'm gonna put this guy up, move this guy over real quick, and set this guy down. Perfect. So there's my mask, okay? At that point, you got it, you got your mask down, you're good to go. Um, watch out, I just made a mess real quick. Hold on. This was actually the towel that I dried off with a very special, super expensive dish towel, okay? I kind of made a mess, splattered myself. So, anywho, all right, so feel free to ask questions again if you have any. So, I still got some folks on here, so you guys aren't totally bored to death, which I like. So, all right, oh, tools of the trade, right? Some people, some, uh, I forget who was asking about uh, how to make straight lines or cut lines. Some people were actually talking about it, and I think I've heard this, right? But I buy these guys on Amazon, right? And the reason I bought this right? You can find 100 packs. Guess what? 120 pack. Same price, like 10 bucks. Okay. Again, every little bit helps. And I don't want to be stingy on these, right? So for me, every single body I do, right, I will use another blade. It costs, what was that ever comes out to? Pennies. So again, I don't want to be stingy. I personally use a blade on every single body. I've, I've seen one guy talk about, he likes a duller blade, not me. Okay, uh, my actual exacto of choice. You got the metal ones, those traditional thing you think of an exacto. This guy actually got on Amazon, I do believe. And if for anyone that actually wants what I where I got these, actually I can put up a link uh, for what I got. But I like the thicker rubber, right? So I can grab it a little bit better. And yeah, that's just me, right? You got to find something that meets your needs in your hand. Actually, I actually have another one that I travel with um, when I'm going on the plane whatnot and actually there's a cap on it i can unscrew it I actually put you know about four blades in there 
so I don't have to carry around this, right? So that's the tools of trade. Now, what about designing? What do I do? Now, this this guy that I wanted, and I'm actually gonna see if I can figure this out, if I can do it correctly. Um, it's not gonna actually let me do a screen share, which is weird. Um, sharing this tab to Facebook. Hmm. So I'm already sharing my stuff to you. 